brain injury prevention. It's a very important topic in sports and in the military. Even with the use of helmets, athletes and soldiers are suffering serious, debilitating damage from repeated head trauma, even when that trauma does not result in concussions. It's believed that repeated blows to the head can cause chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, a close relative of Alzheimer's disease. Alison Schweitzer, a pre-pharmacy student here at Purdue, suffered five concussions by the time she was 15 years old. She is still battling the lasting impact of those injuries. We'll hear Allison's story and meet a team of Purdue researchers who are studying this serious problem and discovering a solution. My sophomore year, I had three concussions in probably what was less than 30 seconds. And now my life has changed drastically. I can't do simple things that I used to do. So after I got these hits, my neurologist later told me that if I were to get hit again that night, there was a 99% chance I would have been dead that evening. Although Allison's brain injuries are permanent, she has not allowed them to hinder her accomplishments. Allison was valedictorian of her high school class, and since entering Purdue, has maintained a 4.0 GPA. Besides her academic achievements, she has established a nonprofit organization called ATTACK. I created ATTACK, which stands for Athletic Teens Take Action Against Concussions That Can Kill, in order to promote concussion awareness among teen athletes, parents, coaches, and officials. I'm excited about all the research that has been taking place because of these Purdue professors and the innovation and the technology that has been provided to uh, provide safety for these athletes. Three years ago, a Purdue research team began collecting data on high school football players, focusing on assessment and prevention of brain injury. The study revealed that even seemingly insignificant impacts to the head have the potential to cause long-term brain injuries. What we've been doing in this study in particular is evaluating high school athletes who uh, participate in contact and non-contact sports so that we can begin to understand effectively what is really changing in the brains of those players who are getting these repeated blows to the head. The nice thing about football uh, is that we have, we have our subjects, our players, in a somewhat controlled environment and so uh, we can utilize that field of play as a laboratory to take the information that we gather and apply it to other areas. We're looking for a, an improvement in our equipment, an improvement in our methodology that we can apply then to the field that can go out and make the game safer. The the basic goal of the research was to just try to figure out why one person gets a concussion and another doesn't, even when, though they've both been hit similar ways. And uh, we decided that to do that, we really needed a team of people. Tom is taking the lead on is uh, devising new sensors and new ways of detecting the neurotrauma. Larry is primarily focused on what happens if you change technique or if you change the rules. Can you decrease the number of hits? And my lab, being a biomechanics lab, what we've been trying to do is find a way to um, design a material that would absorb much more energy than the current uh, helmet systems do. The material that we developed is actually kind of a nice one because it's flexible, it absorbs a lot of energy. Once we kind of decided what that material should look like and realized we might actually be able to make it, that was our aha moment. That was the thing that um, made us feel like we were really contributing. The team's work expands beyond discovery. There is potential for product development and commercialization of the fractal foam padding. Playing a significant role in this endeavor is the Alfred Mann Institute at Purdue. AMI Purdue is the Alfred Mann Institute for Biomedical Development at Purdue University, whose mission is to commercialize worthy life science ideas uh, that are invented here at the university. They take biomedical technologies that need a little bit of extra uh, input, whether it's financial or intellectual property rights or regulatory consulting, and they provide that to people like, like us, the researchers and the students. We've worked with Eric in the past on another project that we're still continuing to fund, and when he brought this idea to us, we felt it was worth investing in and working with Eric to bring this to market. We're very excited about how well this material is absorbing energy and we're looking into the infinite possibilities of applications such as military uses. Once we saw that, we thought, okay, if we can design something that'll prevent concussions or help to prevent concussions in football players, it might do the same thing with soldiers and there might even be a way to modify it 
so that it dampens not just the impacts but the blast waves as well. We work directly with the Army Research Lab and their interest has been high in the work that we're doing here at Purdue University. Our overall goal is to help the designer of helmets come up with a better helmet. So our specific role in that is to come up with a test that can evaluate the performance of the padding within the helmet so that they know what properties of the padding are good, what properties maybe they need to improve on, and that will ultimately lead to a more effective helmet. The testing we're doing here is a little bit different than the testing for a football helmet. An Army soldier will experience different types of impacts as compared to a football player. A football player might in, uh, experience impacts uh, throughout the duration of a game, where a soldier's main concern are blast impacts, higher amplitude, a shorter time period, and, and that leads to a difference in our approach. The development of the product has come a long way in a short period of time and we, we feel like it's ready to be licensed now and be implemented in military helmets and sporting good helmets. We envision this maybe being used in dashboards in cars, um, possibly in the, the seats on school buses. Any place where people suffer head injuries, we'd like to be able to mitigate those effects. Innovations like this are not new to Purdue University. The AMI Center has been instrumental in moving Purdue biomedical discoveries like fractal foam padding to the marketplace more quickly. And Purdue just launched a new research commercialization center that will shorten the time between discovery and product delivery for all types of research, helping spur economic development in Indiana and the nation.